The Radium Podcast, episode 47. That's a lot. That's a big number. That's a big number for Kevin. He's never gotten that high on his count. <laughs> <laughs> When's the last time you counted to 47, Brad? Oh, yeah. I, I don't know, man. That's that's such a weird question to ask someone. Hey, when's the last <laughs> time you counted to 47, bro? Was it whenever you counted all the episodes <laughs> to find out what it was? For yeah, this music one? menus. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> totally. You're like, one, two, Did three. Did it on your fingers? Yeah. yeah. Always. <laughs> so we haven't started yet, but here it comes. Special guest today, Andrew Morgan Smith in the house. Woo! Composer extraordinaire. All the way from down south. Yep. Yep. New Orleans, right? Mm-hmm. Right outside of New Orleans. Um, yeah, we've been working with you for a little while now. I would say, like, what, a year or so? Yeah, about. Yeah. About. So, why don't you introduce yourself, show our audience what, uh, what a composer does every day. Just, like, my mundane, <clears throat> my mundane existence? Yeah, be- besides crying into, into oh, yeah. sodas and... Yeah, that's for sure. And coffees. Yeah, lots of crying, <laughs> lots of tears. No, I, uh, I'm Andrew Morgan Smith. I, uh, I live in Louisiana, uh, but kind of work wherever. Um, and I do a lot of TV, uh, independent film kind of work, uh, as well as just random media projects. Massive score palettes. Yeah. I've, I've worked on, uh, on like TV movies, indie movies. Uh, I've worked with, uh, I worked on the, uh, beautiful and the damned music video that G Easy did. I scored that. That's right. I That's forgot that you did that. <laughs> yeah, I scored that. Yeah. And then uh, I, uh, I don't know, man. I've I've done. I kind of I've kind of enjoyed just kind of doing whatever right. to some extent. You know, like I have like kind of my stable of work that comes in um, with like some some clients that that I've built relationship with, and then and then just like whatever else comes in on top of that is just kind of gravy. Right. And it's always fun to get out of the. Uh, the the rut of whatever you're working on to work on something interesting. Like this past week, mm-hmm. I did mock up work on a TV show. You nice. know, for a composer who's it, none of it's going to end up on TV. It's just like just just setting up for him to make sure that everything sounds right before it goes to right. the orchestrator or whatever. Mm-hmm. It's just nice to do something that's not the same thing you're doing day in and day out. You know, yeah, for sure. Um, most of my days are pretty mundane. You know, wake up have breakfast and go into the office and you toil away in a closet like everyone else does for, you know, for (laughs) sometimes for longer than you'd like to admit. Yeah, it gets weird. We have cooler than uh, cubicles, I'd say, though. Yeah, yeah. Soundproof cubicles, pretty much. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) My, my, I graduated to an actual, I moved this past year and I went from like a 12 by 12 room, like a square room um, that I had actually an office with two comic book artists who were really cool. That's kind of cool, yeah. Yeah, it was like really cool vibe going, but I was just working so much that I wasn't actually... I would like go home for dinner and then have to come back again. Yeah. And you just That's the hate worst. your existence, yeah, you know? Yeah. So so that was kind of when I, w- we had another kid. So like we needed to get a bigger house. And so one of our looks was for something that I could put an office in. And we found a house that had, the previous owner had like built the house. And instead of putting an attic above their garage, they had made like this huge bonus room. Nice. <laughs> that they had actually already had a projector screen and a projector built into the oh, room. Oh, perfect. So I was like, this one and leave the projector and the and the projection screen and they yeah. were like all right so i was like sick yeah. <laughs> you know it's a, it's funny cuz like being a producer composer anything in music right yeah we always like garage studio yeah bonus yeah. room studio my, my, closet <laughs> vocal booth my wife jokes as like i'm we'll drive by a place i'm like you know what would be cool in there and she's like yeah a studio. Yeah. <laughs> right. yeah. What, a studio? You, you think it'd be cool to build a recording stage right yeah. there? N- no. No, no, no. That's, no, not, no, that's no. not what I was No, the ceilings say. aren't high enough. I wasn't going to say that at all. <laughs> you get shit sound, the ceilings aren't high enough. Yeah. But maybe it would be cool anyway. Yeah. <laughs> it's like when I used I to skateboard. You know? Like, you, you see parking lots when you skateboard, yeah. you're like, dude, sick gap. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah, that looks like fun, you know? And gosh, people- I wish I could put some wax on yeah. that. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I wax the shit out of that curb, dude. Yeah, etc. But that's yeah. how that's how all these uh how I think probably a lot of creatives are like that film editors. Yeah, it's like you just yeah. see whatever your life is in that moment. Yeah, you're like uh yeah, that's perfect for an editing bay. Well, perfect. you know what? if you're if you're a video guy or uh, say you're like a director or something. All you think is like, oh, that'd be great for a scene. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The lighting really cool. is great exactly. in here. Exactly. I wish yeah. I could light that exactly yeah. how I wanted. Yeah. That's how we think, I think, about rooms, though. Yeah. Like, when I yeah. go into a room, I'm like, oh. 
The acoustics are great. Listen to the RT60 time <laughs> in this bitch. <laughs> My girlfriend's like, slowly like come up. yeah, hey babe, can you clap real quick? <laughs> Trying to get like a, a good IR <laughs> yeah, in it, you know? Come. I'm like, hell yeah. You actually just bring in a portable speaker and set up a microphone and then just do the whole filter. Yeah. Like the whole, <laughs> the whole sweep in the bathroom. You don't even actually see houses to buy them. You're like, no. I just really... I just really want to sample this room. Yeah, that's a convolution <laughs> right there, baby. Did you ever uh, record anything in the bathroom, you know, for the uh, oh, yeah. for the texture? Uh, well, I haven't, I haven't Everyone's recorded... Everyone's tried that once. I haven't least. recorded anything in the bathroom for texture. I've recorded stuff in bathrooms because I had no other option. Uh, yeah, and he yeah. works on a lot... You work on a lot of horror films and things, yeah. so uh, well, yeah. bathroom only, recordings are probably well, pretty like good. When I first started, <laughs> I started in this, like, tiny apartment. Um, and I, there's a festival where I live called Festival International, which is like this, the, it's the largest free festival, like music festival in the country. Nice. And, um, and like acts come from all over the world to do this. And the only way they fund it is basically through, like they have sponsorships, but the only actual direct money they pull is through, um, something called, um, what's like called a festival pin. So like you buy a little pin that has the year and a design uh, on okay, it. Oh, okay, okay. And, um, and it's usually pretty cool, but like they, they needed a campaign, uh, video for it. Nice. And so they came to me and another guy I know who, and we like wrote this like little track uh, for them to use. I think they still use the video. This is like nine years ago. Yeah. <laughs> and like I didn't have, I was in this tiny apartment. The acoustics were not great in it. It's like this really old, old apartment. Mm -hmm. And I ended up recording like the bathroom, in the bathroom, I ended up recording like the guitar and the bass and the, or actually I think I recorded the bass in the living room, but I recorded my guitar and my soprano saxophone stuff nice. in the bathroom. You little, know, little like, slap echo. Oh yeah, I'm sure. I, whenever I went back and listened to it, I was like, hmm. yeah, man, that's, that's questionable. I mean, it, it works. You know, <laughs> it seems, it's, it, the whole goal was they were like, oh, we wanted to feel like a band that may have gone to the festival or like right. may play the so like it's like kind of world recording stuff. So it's like okay. Like maybe somebody's just recording in their bathroom. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. know, and well, now we try to kill everything. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We're like just. Put us in a closet. And you're like as many coats as possible. Yeah, please. tons of coats. Just All trap coats. up everything. Yeah. The yeah. best, uh, the best booth I've ever recorded in is actually one I made out of a closet. Yeah, yeah. It was like an overly big. Yeah, <laughs> in my apartment, like the in closet. Los Feliz. The closet was like overly big. Yeah. So I was able to like fit a ton of acoustic stuff in there. Yeah. You know? Nice. <laughs> <laughs> That's all. It was just like a ton of bass trapping in well, the corners. I, I actually yeah. like for the first time ever, I did like legit. Uh, sound treatment in my office when I moved into this office. Nice. And it was just like, oh my gosh. Game changer. I'm ashamed. Yeah, <laughs> why like, did I not do for, this before? Yeah. I've been working for eight years and I was like, well, I guess I'll invest in like real sound sound treatment, which in my defense, I didn't want to, like I was in these tiny rooms and I didn't want to put a bunch of money into something that like, I didn't know if it would transfer into another space, yeah. right? Yeah. If it would even help at all in a yeah, tiny ass room. In like yeah. a tiny, literally square box. Yeah, like yeah. it's... Here are all the worst things that this could be. Yeah. Let's do that. Yeah. It's like yeah. an office space. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, um, so I mean, it's, it was a huge game changer. I mean, they're super proud of their materials, but I just didn't have time to deal with. They're like, oh, you could make it for like a quarter of the. And I'm like, yeah, except for I don't have copious amounts of time right. to go cut all this stuff and order it and do all It's like, I need to be writing now. Yeah. So we're gonna just yeah. Let, let's talk about that. That's this is like something I think uh, that's really interesting in the composing world. Speed. Um, is that yeah. what you're gonna get cocaine. to? Yeah, <laughs> cocaine. <laughs> Lots of coffee. <laughs> yeah, <Segway. laughs> right. This is really Segway. interesting. Segway. You know, methamphetamines. Yeah. So let's talk about that in Kevin, composing. Speaking of methamphetamines. Yeah. Right. <laughs> no, actually, anytime I do a segue from now on, I'm gonna say segue before I <laughs> announce it. Yeah. Kevin's the segue king. So speaking about taking drinks of water. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, but no, I think this is really interesting for some of our listeners that are just getting into composing. I know the people that are out there that are doing composing every day, they understand this, but the speed thing, I mean, you could talk on this, your deadlines and the, and the speed of like what this means and what the workflow is and how you manage that, right? Because yeah. you're a composer and it used to be where, you know, you had a team of people you know, you're like writing on paper, right? And you got the orchestrators and the copyist and they're all copying by hand, Yeah. you know? And um, using Sibelius and, you know, all these these like notating softwares came out. And then now it's like you got logic and you just do everything right in the box. Yeah. So what is, what is the workflow there? And like what are, what's say like a typical deadline on a score for like a movie for TV that's say an hour and 20 minutes long well and so 
the the first thing being like workflow. I've, I've developed a really great workflow with one of the companies that I like to work with that I've worked with. I don't know. They were the first company to hire me for like a TV movie. Mm-hmm. Um, because the editor is still the same, and now she's like also a director and a producer and stuff. But but we kind of developed this workflow where, um, and I've become a big fan of it. Is that um, some people want to get? Well, let me just back up. So like, I'll get the full movie, right? Like whenever it's locked. So if it's live action, yeah, if it's live action. So I'll get I'll get a full live action movie. Um, if it's a TV show, it'll have like the commercial breaks in it. Mm-hmm. And then I like to I like to go in. And then um, cut each commercial break, mm. right? So, like, the first, some, usually on those movies. Just get rid of them. No, not, not like, cut, make, like, a section. Gotcha. So, like, here's here's the first, from start, to first commercial break. Here's And this is what I'll call real one. Right, right. And then here's the next spot to the next commercial break. That's real, too. And then I'll work, because a, a guy, uh, another composer, Kevin Manthe, gave me this this tip, because I used to work... He works in a lot of TV stuff, and he's done a lot of, a lot of show, a lot of like uh, kid shows. He does a lot of animation, and um, I used to like be an idiot and like cut cut up each like cue. Mm-hmm. Mm. Um, but then you'd have seventy cues sessions, and when you're trying to, to yeah. and and yeah, it's a little bit easier to keep track of versions that way because then it's like, oh, here's you know, one M two version two point three. Okay, that's the most recent version. That's it. But the problem then becomes like a workflow issue. Whenever you finalize, it takes forever. Yeah, for and sure. And then, and then if there's if there's your especially the larger your session is, you're opening and closing each session, mm-hmm. and and you know it can depending on how Bouncing, big the file is, stemming, bringing yeah. them into a master and how, session, and how big the how big the stem, how, how big the the um the file, you know, like if it takes you two minutes, three minutes, four minutes to open a session, and then you multiply that times seventy, yeah. you're now waiting hours just to mm-hmm. open and close session. For sure. Yeah. So I I uh, Kevin was like, why are not you, but Kevin Manthe was like, mm-hmm. um, was like, why why are why are you just just work? He actually works in full episodes, so mm-hmm. he's like, I just work in the full episode, and then when I'm done, I grab the whole thing and I move it to the right, and then I start the next episode. And if I need something from back there, I just grab it and move it forward. Yeah, that's cool. Which is a, actually like a great thing. So I kind of I adopted it in my own way, which is um, I'll do like I mean he's doing like 25 minute TV show, so like right, right. it is kind of similar in that my longest reel is usually 20 minutes, right? Yeah, makes so. Sense. My first reel, I'll grab, pull it in, and then there's reel one, and I'll have reel one version, whatever. Right. And then as I finish the reel, I just pull it to the right, and now, oh, I really liked, I don't have to reprogram this. I just grab it and move it. Right, with forward. drums and... Yeah, so it's, it's like almost like a form of music editing to some extent. Like sure. I, I'm able to just like, here's something I've already worked super hard on getting right. I'm just going to pull that over. Totally. Right. That's, um, that's, a, that's a big hack, I think... Uh, you know, to stop you on that because I think it's something that's really useful for many, like, composers just getting started. <clears throat> just, like, being able to build your palette. Mm-hmm. You know, like, let's say you have a thematic thing for a character or a scenario, the love theme, right? Yeah. You know, and then you know that a love theme is going to keep coming back episode one, three, five, six. I mean, if we're talking full house, the show. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the love theme, you know, like the the kindness cue sort of yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. That's going to come back every single episode. Mm. The lesson is learned. Yeah, exactly. Right, they all sit down. <laughs> so that's really, that's really a major workflow hack is like to be able to go, okay, like in Logic or Cubase or whatever. Whatever it is, yeah. You're pulling it over and you're able to go, even if it's at a different tempo, you know, you're like, take that and you just bring those drums over and just tweak it if you right, need to tweak yeah. it and tweak it, it do the fills you and know? it's even more valuable than just straight music editing because you have all the midi data yeah exactly. so it's like oh i needed to be shorter i needed to be longer i just tweak the midi data how it needs right. to be and now i'm done and and it's especially like it i used to be i used to be like i used to not understand how to music edit so i would like write yeah. 70 minutes of yeah, original just music keep writing and writing you know and i'm just and i and I, as i've gotten older it's like i have a family now i have kids now it's like i need to work smarter a lot and faster too, and fa- yeah. i mean like even i i mean i've had days where i write 10 minutes of music in a day yeah. and it's like and that's a lot just so you guys know yeah like yeah. <laughs> you don't want to do you don't want to do that if you don't have to it's just i mean but at a certain point you are kind of painting by numbers right like mm-hmm. like here, it, it's as you're starting the score, you have like a wide open palette of like, this could be anything. Right. But then as you've like, here's the themes and like almost as you're writing, it's like, it can only do this. Yeah. Right. Like totally. I, I, I'm i not going to all of a sudden pull something out of left field unless it specifically is required. Right. Like 
like you're saying, here's the love theme, and this is how it has sounded in the past, so this is basically what it's going to be with maybe right. some variation. Right. So you're not actually getting anything... You shouldn't be getting anything too crazy out of your palette, out yeah. of your ideas. And actually, I think that from a workflow perspective, you want to limit yourself. Yeah. Like, I, I see some of these composers who have... I mean, and it's because they, they can, but, like, to some extent... Like, I see composers open up, it's like, I have every single instrument that I've ever owned yeah. right here. And I'm like, how do you even start yeah like that's just it's just so <laughs> much it's so much information right. it's so much uh it's just so much i just it's just yeah, so you're just I, flipping through sounds all day yeah yeah right. it's like i could i could sit there and play with the sound and, and one of the things that i always tell people it's like the most important thing you can do on a cue is just start writing it yeah like so. get ideas flowing like actually get something down right because you can't even you, if it sucks yeah because it may not be the final thing that's still in there mm -hmm. but just like, oh, just like, oh, I'm going to play it. And then I play it. And then I, oh, well, I didn't quite like how that was. I'm going to start again. Play yeah. it. Oh, I didn't like how it was. And then just, you could just do that for hours. Yeah, and yeah. I've caught myself doing that where 100%. I'm like, I have to write five minutes, four minutes, three minutes of music today. What am I doing? Yeah. It's like a sketch pad, like almost sort of getting the the juices flowing, you know? like Yeah. Like I, I think uh, the hard part about a lot of producers, composers nowadays is they get stuck in the same thing. Mm -hmm. Like, I always do this. Yeah. You know, I always Formulas. do a chord progression. Yeah. And then I put my drums down and then I do my 808s or, you know, if yeah. we're talking about producers. Yeah, yeah. Talk about composers, uh, I always do a chord progression with my piano and then I do this. Yeah. You know, well, and that's okay, but it's like... Well, sometimes also, depending on what you're working on, the formula could also be baked into what you're working on. Oh, yeah. It's already so like there. That, so like that, I kind of found that I, when I was first working, I, I don't do as much now, but like I, my first TV movie was called Swamp Shark, right? Mm. And like there were these disaster Good movies. Old Swamp Shark. Yeah, there were these disaster movies that, that, uh, and and the shark movies that had this kind of formula. And, right. and like as you broke down it, like it would always end up being kind of the same thing. So like you kind of get pigeonholed into doing right, the same right, thing right. because... The arc is the same. Yep, you're, so you're like, getting the tension, the build up, the build up, the 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 over the top moment where the, the volcano's hits. exploding yeah. and it has the drone shot of all the planet being destroyed. It's like, yeah. you know, like to in, in like some what else are you gonna do? Right? And I yeah. I caught myself figuring out like, oh my gosh, like I'm catching myself doing this and and real and thinking, oh, I'm just kind of like, oh, we'll fill in the blank because this this is I'm stuck. Like, right. and and that's not the worst thing. It's not the end of the world. Especially when basically our goal is to pay our bills, right? Like that's right. kind of like my definition of success on this in this job is that like are you are you paying your bills on this? Right. Are you making like, a living? Are you making 100%? a living? Like, like you're not the, you're not rolling up in a Rolls Royce, but Yeah. But you're making music for a living. Making music <laughs> like, for a living and you're paying your bills and like I can send my kids to school. Right. And you know, like I have a I, I mean, it's like hard to, it's like silly. It sounds weird saying it was like, but I have a good, like middle class existence. Yeah, Congratulations, yeah. you've made it. <laughs> you did it. You know, like yeah. you did it. Um, like that's the kind of stuff that like is important to keep in perspective because it's easy to see like some composer that's like, oh man, look at my Ferrari. You yeah. know, they roll <laughs> yeah, out to yeah, the yeah. studio in their Ferrari and it's like, yeah, but, but like, the industry has changed so much since that person started. Hundred yeah, percent. You know, like the heydays of the nineties oh, and gosh, the huge yeah. royalties and the big budgets. Yeah, and, and, you know. and like, and only you could do it if you had a multi-million dollar studio. But yeah, well, and uh, and that's the kind of thing that you know, and and it's become definitely a volume gig at this point mm -hmm. on like the low end TV stuff. It's a volume gig versus a. Versus like a, oh, well, I'm going to take this time and finesse this yeah, little yeah. idea. I'm John Williams. Yeah. With, with those Which videos that you be. always see, the, the John Williams one where he's sitting with Spielberg on the piano. And yeah, he's like... I'm just, I just was like working out the melody and, you know, and, oh, that's great. Ooh. Yeah. Like, yeah, that's just like, like... That doesn't exist anymore. Yeah, that's very romantic. I mean, it would be... I mean, I I think that those relationships still can exist. Sure. You know, I've ha I have a couple director relationships where I feel like there's a lot of collaboration going yeah. on, and that's that's awesome. Yeah, you always get a little bit of time to, you know, get the palettes and the ideas going back yeah, and forth. Yeah, and, and also, I think a lot of that relationship is, like, trust. Right. <laughs> you know? Yeah. And also, Spielberg has a lot of musical training himself, so, For like, sure. he's not in the boat of, like, oh, well. Yeah. I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. Talk a little on that because I but, think that's well, not me, every let me, director, well, let me, right? Let me talk real quick about speed and timing. So, like, yeah. because things are a volume business, mm -hmm. 
Uh, like I usually have three to six weeks to score. Right. Like forty to seventy minutes of music. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then also because none of these pay over the top <laughs> fees. Right. Right. Mm-hmm. Like last year, I I'm gonna say I worked on. But effectively, I scored nine films, nine right. feature films. Yeah. And mm-hmm. that doesn't count any commercial work, any spec work, any, uh, any like short film, anything else that I did. Just right. purely writing for feature films. Right. So like, I guess the lowest one I did last year was like 30 something minutes for like an indie film. Right. 30 mm-hmm. to possibly 70 plus minutes of music. Mm-hmm. Nine movies. Right. And like, and and you're not I'm not making a glorious living up front. You right, know what I mean? Right, like right. that's the thing yeah. is that like uh you know, like you're not pulling in six figures just doing even with that much work. Right. And I know some guys who are doing feature films every two weeks. Jeez. And doing <laughs> multiple and I'll be yeah. on two films at once. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but just because you're not getting a big enough It's fee, like required now. Mm-hmm. And and you're not getting a big enough fee. Mm-hmm. To to basically say like sorry I can't do it but like right. let me recommend my buddy who can do it you right. know what I mean like right. you're not getting a big enough fee to worry about that right um and like that is a huge like it like like being fast mm-hmm. and being like moderately good like I I had a teacher Jack Smalley who said to I I said to him I was like dude I like I don't know if I can hang this is like in in college I I, I did some, I was a crazy person. Of like just very you, singularly you were, driven. You were a crazy person. Yeah, I'm still a crazy person. I'm reminded <laughs> constantly. But but as in like in college, I was very singularly driven. Right. Right. So like all I did focused on like I want to write music. I want to do this and like mm-hmm. and I didn't feel like I was getting enough information where I was at. So like as a freshman in college, I started looking for like mentor relationships, and then like mm, right. one of my teachers had said, "Oh well, you should look at USC." And, and NYU, they have film scoring master's programs right. and like, you know, colleges are always looking to put people in colleges. So yeah. um, <laughs> it's a big business. Yeah. So I was I was like, OK, cool. So I went and looked that up and I was like, OK, well, let me look at all the people who who like went to USC. So then I started contacting students at USC. That's awesome. who were there. I was like, I want to go to where you're at. Like, let's have a conversation. Right. Uh, and like and I contacted USC. I was like, is there anyone who will do private lessons? Nice. with you and 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 they were like actually yeah so like jack um they were like yeah send your stuff to jack and like he'll do correspondence lessons with you that's sick uh and i mean i don't know i think he's still alive he is ancient at this point uh <laughs> but he's like super super awesome guy but like he he basically did like i would send him what i'd write in sibelius and then he would like take it out, write it up, like, you know, orchestration notes, and then write out an explanation and send it to me. Wow. Send it back mm-hmm. to me. Um, and so at one point, he, I did the Aspen Music Festival, like, as I was about to great co- graduate college, and uh, and he came in, and he actually, uh, like, soft offered to help me try to get into the program at USC mm-hmm. because someone had dropped out. And I was like, Jack, I don't, A, I don't have a degree. Right. He's like, well, we could talk to Brian about it. Like the head of the school, yeah. I was like, uh, <laughs> we'll just have a chat. We'll just talk. Uh, yeah. But but I mean, I, I and I was like, I I turned him down because I was like, I have one more semester in college to finish two degrees. Like right. I'll just finish. Like, yeah. um, but he, I said also Jack, like I don't feel like I fit in at all. Like right. he was he was um, the other composers at the thing were like much more, um classically trained composers like i was the only person not from a major city gotcha, not from yeah. major like and they're all like super talented like we one night we all got it was five of us we all got our heads like let's show each other what we auditioned with yeah, you yeah. know and everyone else's was live music wow everyone else's was live score this and is all recorded yeah You're yeah like, all Whoa. recorded and mine was like from a horror movie that i did that i'm kind of glad never saw the light of day <laughs> yeah. you know um but it was like uh, so like I I don't even I just remember thinking like oh my gosh oh what is shit that? so I told Jack I was like Jack I just don't feel like I don't like I don't know if I want to go down this road if I like these people are like ridiculous right. like and uh, I'm good friends with with them but it's just like and they're super talented but Jack was like a lot of composers who are in that position are not really film composers right and he said if talent was 40% of this job, I'd be surprised. Yeah. 
And, yeah. and same thing with producing. Well, and and yep. that's something that like the longer I'm in this, the more I see that yeah. it's like there's a lot of other things. Like salesmanship is a huge thing. <laughs> Relationships are second to none. I mean, so, like yeah. there are a lot of people working who are just not great. Horrendous. Yeah, I I'll mean, just it. like yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> it's Talk true, it. though. Yeah, <laughs> it's uh, true. But no, it's really, it really is like a. It, it, it's such a thing of like if they feel confident in what you're doing and you're giving what they want, it doesn't right. matter. It has so much to do with delivery. It's it's getting the product finished Client on time, services, right? Yep. <laughs> no, it really Client is services. Yeah. It's it's all a sales by pitch. deadline. It's all a sales pitch. Yep. It's all it's all about am I delivering what they're asking for? That services the picture because I think that's mm-hmm. also the, the deeper issue. Right, is that so many composers and i have trouble with this as well sometimes like just just letting yourself letting yourself let go of the music yeah L- look like, at my music yeah. well, it's like it's like <laughs> look you at know, me yeah it's distracting like yeah. so many so many people like i mean i i actually just made a video about like dealing with notes you know oh, yeah. and like one of the things that was it's really like i always as i was going through it i was like i always find that there'll be a cue that i love Mm. That gets like butchered. Yeah, this this <laughs> just doesn't work with the picture. Yeah, it's just like mm, it's all over the dialogue. Made, yeah, it's just like a little busy. This, you've made this really lush yeah. thing that you're super proud of. Yeah, we don't care. We actually I hate think, it. I think maybe one held note would do it. And I'm like, <laughs> we just get like a like a chord and then just pad out. Yeah, <laughs> if you could just if you could just hold one, one just one chord. If you could just hold one piano note. Yeah, just like. You know, do you have that plugin? Yeah. It's, you know, the the one that has the picture of the... I think we want the instrument that goes... Boo, yeah. You know, like... <laughs> <laughs> you know? And that's the kind of stuff that, like, the sooner you can deal with that stuff, the better off you are. For sure. For sure. And it's just... And you realize that, like, you can be the most talented person on earth and mm-hmm. you may never work. Right. 100%. You know? I think a, a big part of composing... Um, for me at least, I would say is like the ability to capture the story, the feel and the vibe of the character's stories and the undertones of what's going yeah. on with the sound. So it doesn't yeah. it doesn't even need to be musically great or perfect yeah, or dysfunctional. inspiring or whatever. It <laughs> it just will tell you this is what this scene is and this is what these characters feel or you what they're doing. The emotions of the of the score and that's it. A chord and can anything do that. above that anything above that is just happenstance. Like yeah. I think John Williams had said like most film music isn't great. It's just kind of like mm. it's just kind of luck that people enjoy listening to his scores. Yeah. Basically he was yeah. just like it's just kind of like it's funny. It's just like people just happen to like the music that it's playing. It's just not that's not what it's supposed to be. Right. It says the guy who writes like Wagnerian <laughs> level <laughs> I was gonna music. Say, right? You know, yeah. like it's easy for you to say. Uh but Well, how much of that, like, you know, because this is my biggest thing is, you know, especially with engineering, Mm -hmm. right? So that it's so technical Mm -hmm. and it's so artistic, but you can really truly only be your full potential of artist with mixing and mastering engineering when you've mastered the technical so that you're not thinking about it. Yeah. And and how much of that like plays into, you know, when you're sitting down and you're like, dude, you got a 60 minute thing of 60 minute music on this, this picture, how much of that ties in where you're not, you don't have to think about, oh, I got to, you know, I open up VSL and my MIDI CC data on. Yeah, the- you got to have, I mean, I feel like <laughs> having a template is so important and then right. also having, having kind of a roadmap. So I always like to do some kind of like color sketch or like template sketches. So I kind of have like theme ideas that yeah. I'm already bouncing back and forth. But I also think that just like what becomes so difficult about releasing, like it's so hard. I mean, it'd be so hard anyway to be to become a John Williams level composer. Mm. But I think mm. also another thing that makes it more difficult is that there are so many more skills you have to have in order to get there. Oh yeah, I mean, right? I, I don't, I don't even think that John Williams has those skills without his team. You know. Well, but but what I'm getting at, yeah, I agree. But what I'm also getting at is that is that like John Williams is worrying about orchestration and color and timbre whenever he's writing right right? Mm -hmm. but because of where we're at like i'm just getting to a point where i'm able to start hiring other basically team members like i brought Mm -hmm. on a a music editor who helps me do a lot of stuff recently Mm -hmm. and i brought you on to do some mixes on stuff right uh or i should say y'all on to do some mixes on stuff but then Mm -hmm. but that's not 
Um, but like, I'm just getting to that point where I'm like, okay, I need to start pushing that envelope. But before that, you are the composer, the orchestrator, the mixer, right, the producer. Right. You, you're, <laughs> you're also the, you're the agent because you, you know <laughs> when, the no agent wants no, Closing no agent, the contracts. Well, no agent wants to touch anybody. You always get the well, just one more big thing. Yeah, yeah. And and like so true. And I mean, and I get it, but it's also one of those things where you're wearing all these hats and you become like the jack of all trades, but master of none. Right. I know mm. just enough. To be dangerous in this, mm -hmm. but I really don't know what I'm doing. Right. That preset on Ozone sounds great. Yeah. Print. I think. Yeah. Print. <laughs> <laughs> you know. In my speakers, in my room, in yeah. my, you know, yeah. zone right Exa now. Exactly. And yeah. I mean, and also you don't have a lot of time to second guess it. Right, right, right. So like you're you're mm -hmm. like, oh, well, this sounds pretty good. Cool. Three minutes, done. Bounce it. Next thing. <laughs> yeah, bounce it, ship you know? it. Yeah, exactly. Get the stems rolling. And that's and that's part of this problem is that you have to be ready to deal with that. And also, you kind of have to be ready to just, like, kind of suck for a while. Yeah, 100%. Like, I think that for mm. me, I had— I In had, any art. Well, in any art. But then also, like, I had the advantage of, like, because in college, I was like, this is what I want to do, this is what I want to do. Mm. I got a lot of sucking out. Yeah, yeah. You know. <laughs> uh, you sucked a lot in college, huh? Yeah, yeah. Put that on a trade shirt. <laughs> Radio Media. I got Media. all my sucking out in college. Radio Media. Yeah. I got all my sucking out in college. <laughs> um, no, I—, I Basically, like you, you're gonna, you're just gonna not know what you're doing. So, a friend of mine who's done a lot of concert work, and I get a lot of concert composers who contact me, like I want to do film music. Mm. Yeah. Usually, especially now that I can afford to buy a house, they're like, "How do you do that?" Yeah. How do you um, do it? I and need a manager. And my first, my first response is like, "Have you ever written anything, even in like GarageBand?" Yeah, yeah, right. And they're like, "Uh." What's Garage Man? Yeah. <laughs> and I and I and I I literally had a conversation with a friend of mine the other day where I said, dude, this is what I need you to do. I need yeah. you to go home, open up Garage Band, write anything you want. Yeah, go I don't suck. care what it is. <laughs> it's gonna sound terrible. I said, if you but if you can't stand to do that for a day, yeah, that's gonna be the next five years of your life. Easy. Easy. Maybe, and you're also maybe having more. to work <laughs> yeah. and you're also having to do other stuff. Like you're not just yeah. some single guy. Yeah, yeah. Like Someone's you have just other like responsibilities. dumping money into your bank account. Yeah, it's know? like you have other responsibilities. So like maybe even more. Yeah. So like you have to be ready to suck. Trademark Fire Festival. Yeah. Uh, but <laughs> but but like uh, but it really is like you have to be ready to just sound terrible. Yeah. Which is hard for like like this guy is a good musician. Mm -hmm. Like he's like a pretty good composer. He's like. You know, like you have to kind of die to yourself a bit and just mm. be ready that you are not going to sound good for the foreseeable future and thousands of dollars down the toilet. You know, there's a huge technical skill set in modern composing. It's like, can you troubleshoot? Like, how many times have you just had to like sit at your computer and figure out how to get audio routed again so yeah. that you can get, you know, you audio fix out of your, your hard drive buffer I, errors? Yeah. <laughs> you well, know what I mean? <laughs> well, I don't know. Brad told you about my phone conversation, my panicked phone conversation with him last week. <laughs> mm -hmm. Right. So I was doing Pro this mock up gig. You. Oh my gosh. I was doing this <laughs> mock up gig. I work in Logic. And uh, part of this gig was like, you must have the most recent version of Sibelius and the most recent version of Pro Tools. Mm -hmm. And I was like, you're like, kill no. me. <laughs> uh, so I, I, I own Sibelius, but I, I, I mean, the unfortunate reality is I haven't owned, I haven't opened Sibelius in like four years. Right. Yeah. Um, and then, uh, and so I, I'm like, okay, I find you can do subscriptions to both. So I was like, okay, I could spend 50 bucks and have both of them for a month. All right. Yeah. Let's do this. So, um, so I, I was having a tempo map problem where the tempo wasn't working because the producer, the composer works in Sibelius and Pro Tools. Mm -hmm. And then I was working by him. I like, I would take his, Pro Tools file, export the tempo, then uh, the MIDI, you know, ep export the MIDI, then go to Sibelius, export the MIDI, mm -hmm. then bring it all into Logic, and then, you know, bring in the video, match it up, and then I'm right. working off the Sibelius <laughs> score to do the mock-up. Mm -hmm. So I have, like, the MIDI data, but you're, like, doing all the automation and programming. Yeah. Well, for whatever reason, it wasn't working, and I could not figure out why. And so they, were, so I got like the composer was not happy with me, and then his the guy who I was subbing in for because I was mm -hmm. my buddy went on vacation, and he he texted me. He's like, so uh, he says that you're having tempo map problems, and I was like, he, he's like, <laughs> sounds uh, like personal. Issue. I was like, I don't. I was like, I don't. I don't know what's wrong. I was like, I don't know what's mm -hmm. happening. I was like, I'm gonna try and do the export again. He's like, worst case scenario, just like print the click and then import it. Right. Yeah. Uh, and he's like, worst case scenario, you just draw it in. I'm like, ugh, please. I was, and I was like, I still have, this is like three days into this week-long job. I'm like, I still have four more days of this. Yeah. 
And I call Brad. I'm like, dude, I don't know what to do. I, I open up Pro Tools. It If I try to move at all, it just there's a boatload of errors that just keep coming up. It's like <laughs> all these errors, like AAE, error <laughs> minus 35. And I'm like, what? what is this? And then and then I click on like more info and then it brings you to the to the Avid page and it's like, oh, it's just here's like- another error that's sort of related, but isn't the same number <laughs> as that one. And I'm like, I don't know what's going on. So I'm mm-hmm. Googling all the error messages, trying to figure it out. And everyone's like, it's like getting, it's like bringing up error message from like 2012 <laughs> and 2008. And I'm like, yeah, I don't think these are the same messages. So, and then I couldn't get any audio out of it. I, mm. and even though it was like correctly. So he was spiraling out of control. Dude, I was like, I was like, this is the biggest, like highest pressure gig of my life. Yeah. And here I am about to be doing my last biggest high pressure right. gig of my life. Right. So and so finally I, I get Brad on the phone. I'm like, dude, I don't know what's going on. This is so stupid. <laughs> like I'm so done. And I'm like pacing around my office about to have yeah. a heart attack. And he's like, uh, what OS are you on? And I was like, well, and then it turns out it was like, just update your OS and see what happens. Right. And that was the whole problem. Right? It's basically huh. like turn it off and turn it on again. Yeah, it was like, <laughs> but wait an hour while you turn it off and turn it on, you know, after you've been Let it do its having thing. a heart attack. And Sounds so crazy. I, I, I don't update know. It, I update it. I open it again. I was able to export the click and the MIDI and it worked fine. And I was like, so like your own tech support. Yeah. You know, is, and I mean, now if I were in Los Angeles, I probably would have just been like, get some grunt on the phone and get him to fix it. And I would yeah, go take right, a walk. Right. But especially at lower levels in myself because of because of where I'm at, it's like you are very limited on your mm-hmm. resources. Mm-hmm. So like one of the it's first questions you. <laughs> one of the first questions I ask any person who I'm gonna hire, I say, So an error message comes up, what do you do? Right. And if the answer is, Oh, I ask you about it, I go, uh, you're not getting hired. Yeah. You know, like, <laughs> like it's like the one, the two things that I always ask about are: Are you doing anything right now? Right. Like, are you making anything right now? Right. And what do you do if an error message comes up? Right. Because Key. those two things will inform you what kind of person that that person is, mm-hmm. and whether or not they're going to take the initiative to go change something. Like I had an, I I gave a kid uh, uh an iPad app years ago with like lemur which is like a mm-hmm. uh an app that allows you to do like uh cc control right uh like through bluetooth on the ipad and stuff on an right? interface yeah. and do key switches and stuff and i was like hey make this work right he spent 10 minutes on it and went i can't fix it i can't do it and right. i was just like what why are you here yeah. like this is wh- like why you are here is yeah. to do this like you have ancillary benefits from being here yeah this is why <laughs> i need you here yeah you know it's, I, I think the, the hardest thing right now in our industry and with, I don't even want to say like this new, you know, generation of kids or whatever. I, I don't want to talk like that. I think, <laughs> I, I think it has, <laughs> Brad, you sound like a- <laughs> it's just not just, it has a lot to do with nobody conceptually understanding things or yeah. wanting to conceptually understand. Mm-hmm. So they're all looking at YouTube and they're like, what plugin is he using? And like, I get those questions all the time, right? What plugins do you use? And it's like, who cares? But if you had the... It doesn't the, matter. What they don't understand, and I catch myself doing it sometimes too when it's like, but it's with sample libraries. Yeah, so there's right, like right. Some, there's yeah. like some sonic things you can't really change. But at the same right. time, it's like if you put the best mixer mm-hmm. in Pro Tools with just the Pro Tools suite... Yeah, they'll kick your ass. They'll kick your ass. Yeah. <laughs> Dverb will sound better than it matter. ever yeah. will sound yeah. ever. And I'm like, you know, you, you talk to people and it's just like, it's about like... What plugins are you using? Yeah. What yeah. Are your, what speakers do you have? What microphone you got? Yeah. What do you got? What gear? What gear? 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 You should make like you should name your ears something like and yeah, then, right. like, Get them tattooed and serial <laughs> numbers on the back and be like you got to get the some Bradley six thousands. You got to get yeah. them in. They're sick. Yeah. Yeah. I'll just try to sell my own ears. Well, yeah. you know what? It's funny because uh, I, I feel like you can't teach someone what they don't care about. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, it's true. I and mean, people only want to learn about, that's why that, you know, YouTube does so good is because people like only yeah. want to learn this part of scoring yeah. or, yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. Or drop. They shipping. don't care about sales <laughs> and scoring. <laughs> no, it's really They're like how to make millions of dollars drop shipping. Go. Well, and that's why actually like, uh, one of the things of, um, one of the things that so many times I, during guest lectures that I talk to students and talk to, talk to people about is that like this is a job yeah 100 percent. like it's not, i we know don't that go to you the think studio that i play. go into the studio yeah. and like skip into the room and like, like <laughs> yeah yeah like i yeah. i firmly think like i talk to people they're like but you write music for a living dude 
What's you write, that like? But you write music yeah. for a living. I'm hey, like, shit, my girlfriend still treats me like that. Yeah. <laughs> like, but, like, I'm a teenager. Like, well, what like, do you, you got to go to the studio and make music. Yeah. It's like, what are you doing? Mm. Uh, and yeah. I, I, <laughs> I got to go to a hospital. Yeah. What are you going to do? Well, like, it's, go you hit know, a and I think, but I think that there's like, and actually, my brother in law, like, used to kind of do that. And then he actually came to my office. Yeah. He's like, oh, shit. And so he's sitting on the couch and we're kind of talking. He's like, all right, like, well, I'm just going to keep working. It's like, okay, cool. And like, five minutes later, he's like, you listen to that click the whole time? Yeah. Like, <laughs> yes. He's like, boring. He's like, I can't. I don't know how you do this. I can't do this. Yeah. Like, I can't be. And he, like, left. He Just was there for about five spot. to ten minutes after we stopped talking. And I was, he's like, nah, I'm out. Yeah. I can't do this. And it really is, like, there are things that suck about being a composer. 100%. And and you have to get through that stuff yeah. to be able to be a composer and, de- and just make money. Like, right. it's one, oh, I've scored one movie. Cool. Sick, dude. So when's your next movie coming in? Because those bills have already been paid and your money's yeah. all gone now. <laughs> yeah. You know, like how and you got to wait for those residuals to. <laughs> yeah, wait. <laughs> if there's residuals. minimum six to nine months. Yeah. And like really wait if you want to do international three to five years. Right. So like, where's your next movie? Yeah. Because or your next project or whatever you're doing because it is a volume game. Yes. And and. I would love nothing more to only be able to take on, like, have a TV show and say, eh, don't send me that stuff, you know? <laughs> but, like, uh, or or only work on four movies a year because the fee's enough to cover everything I need. Right, right, You right. know, but, like, but that's not reality right now. No, no. There's only really, like, you know, I mean, I'd say probably about 20 to 30 composers yeah. that can do that. The rest are like volume game. It's I got to take yeah. on this and this and this and this TV show and and this commercial and this. Yeah, thing. you're yeah. taking on three to three to five movies a year and then what three you know like six shows a year and these are big shows and big films. Yeah, yeah, and for they these have, composers. Yeah, and they have yeah. and they also have five and six employees. Yeah, and they're also living off BMI. Oh yeah, I mean, and, and I once was in a I've, I've I went to BMI a while ago, mm-hmm. and I was told. Don't you ever live off? Don't don't live. Don't expect to live off your royalties. Like no, don't it's don't. A bad idea. And I'm like, it's a bad idea, but but that's how I have the advantage. <laughs> I mean, I I have the advantage of like, and this is I I've truly come to believe it's an advantage. Mm-hmm. There are a lot of disadvantages for not living truly in L.A. Right. But a big advantage is my house is you cost know, of living. Yeah. <laughs> oh well, my house, my house is you know. I mean, if I were to buy an equivalent house in like Santa Clarita, it'd be in the millions. Yeah, yeah. My house, and in 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 L.A. proper is multiple millions. Yeah, people yeah. don't even buy here. Well, but what I'm saying is, even your rent is yeah. still going to be astronomical. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. like, my rent is probably half of your mortgage. Right. Or I mean, my mortgage is probably half of your rent. Half the rent, right? You know, and and so I kind of live at like a third of what my what my royalty capacity was. Right. Because if the floor drops out. Right. Then I have, first of all, I have a couple months. Right. But then also, I'm not going, oh my gosh. Like every month is like, oh gosh, I really hope this paycheck comes in. Right, right. You know, and and it also gives me a little cushion so I don't necessarily have to chase after everything that comes right, through the door. Right, right. Because that's Because the there are some things that oh, you like. Oh, dude. I had a guy. Do we I really have to do this? In December, hit me up and go, I need, we fired our other composer. Mm-hmm. I need 90 minutes of music for a horror movie that's wall to wall. And I have $2,000, and I need it done in a month. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, I'm not doing that. You're I just like, straight no, up was like, man. I'll nope. go. I'll go drive Uber. I literally, I, yeah. I, well, I said I was too busy, which is yeah. true. I was too busy. But also, like, even if I wasn't busy, I would have been like, I'm too busy. Yeah, 100%. I mean, it was insane. You know, you can't, I had, actually, uh, I had, I mean, it's just like, sometimes you just got to say no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, I mean, I'm not, I'm not a college student that just needs the credit anymore. Right, right, right. Mm-hmm. You know, I've scored 45 feature films. Right. I don't need another feature film credit. Right, right. I'm not worried about, oh, well, maybe they're not going to think I can score a feature right, film. Right. It's like, I'm not worried about that anymore. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's a time when that's valuable. Like, not all value is transactional in that sense, you know? Like, for not, sure. Like, people say, don't work for free. It's like, well, don't work for free unless you have zero track record. Yeah, exactly. Then and then you, you work need for free, something. Yeah. Then you do what you got to do. Yeah, you got to build, build up your reputation in this industry. It's not, nobody's going to ask you, like, Hey, you know, explain to me how you're gonna do my project. Yeah, they're gonna say, "Let me hear stuff like that. I want to yeah. hear what you've done." They're never gonna go like, "Oh, well, pitch to me how you're gonna make the music for my project." Yeah, and like, they you've never done this, right? Well, they're Just taking tell a me risk. how you're gonna do it. The reality is that, and I remember having this mindset for a while until you kind of look back and think, "What the hell was I thinking?" Mm-hmm. Which is that 
you're they're taking a risk on you. Oh yeah. If if someone is asking to if someone's hiring you and you have no credits, right? And you've never done this before. Massive risk. It's a huge risk. I mean, especially like you've you've never scored a feature film before. Right. They don't know how long it's going to take you to do it. You don't know how long it's going to take <laughs> you to do it. You don't know if your setup is even going to Yeah, you don't know what your workflow is. Right. Yeah. You don't know how you're going to work with them. You don't know how you're going to get stuff approved from them. Right. There are so many question marks that that to some extent you can't blame them for being like, well, what am I supposed to do? I mean, I don't blame them. Right. How? Why? Why would they want to pay you a bunch of money? You know. I, I mean, I th- I think that that's the hard part about um, getting into the industry. You know, it's like the old ad- adage of like, how do you get experience if no one's willing to give it to you? Give yeah. it to you, right? But it's like. At the same time, if you've never gone through the process of doing something from beginning to end, because yeah. we have a lot of people out there making music now, but it's not, it, they're not making a product. Yeah. They're like making a sketch and then they're releasing it. Yeah. It's not done. Well, it's, you it's, can't, you can't do that in yeah. the industry of we're making a film. Yeah. We have a budget, we have a deadline, we have people paying for it. Yeah. There's you you that, can't do that. You can't that. say like, well, that's good enough. That's all I could come up well, with. Well, it's like sometimes I hear these amazing mock-ups by some some composers. Mm-hmm. And like, uh, and and whenever it's not done for a movie, mm-hmm. it's hard to keep perspective. Right. Yeah. Because you kind of sit there and you go, this person could have spent. Two years. Two years. Yeah. Two years. This person could have no clue. This person also may have a mixer who mixes all their stuff. Right. Which right. makes a huge which can make a huge difference. Process of like, like you, you have, said, years. <laughs> yeah, I mean it's and and I always I've actually really pulled back from from trusting any demo material on a website. Amen. From from like on like a sample website. I want to watch the walkthrough. Yeah, yeah. Because the walkthrough yeah, show is me. what it's going to sound like. Yeah, show me what you got going on. Because, because, and Do I remember- Do it live on, on YouTube. Well, you know? no, it's, yeah. it's, it really is true. Like, so many times I'll, like, listen to the- And I've had weird experiences now where I'm like, why did they even put this as a demo? Yeah. Like, it's not, <laughs> either it's not good or it's, or it sounds like the person's never even used the instrument before. Right. Like, you just, they're using the beta test version and there's yeah. some weird problem <laughs> with it or it sounds weird and tinny or- Or the, vi- or the opposite problem where I'm like, wow, that sounds extremely good. Yeah. Like, so good that I'm thinking- when did you record this and when did you put it out? Yeah, like what what, what happened there? How much the of that is pre baked? <laughs> yeah, it's like, it's like pre baked. I, I wrote this thing a year ago it's and like, I'm just finishing it's like it like off. All the strings are not live, yeah. but all the brass could be live. Maybe I recorded some stuff in my college course. I may have I may have pre records of trumpets going triplet and all yeah. those <laughs> things that you're hearing, which makes you think that it's real, right? You know, but. But it's like, and those are all tricks that are great to learn, mm-hmm. but it's like, it's just such a, it's like every instrument, it's like your, your computer is your instrument. hundred percent. And, and that, that's like such a misleading, I don't know. It's like such an easy way to mislead people. Oh, hundred percent. And I think, I think it has a lot to do with the medium. Yeah. You know, if we're talking about medium and, and Kevin could talk on this a lot, you know, it's about, you know, when you're, you're you're like cooking up a song for an artist, like let's say an urban genre artist and you're producing something in the studio, you don't need much, right? Yeah. You just need like a chord progression. You yeah. need something that someone can put a melody on or a rap on it or yeah. just start writing on, right? Yeah. Like in the composing world, we're like, okay, the director, whoever, they want to get delivered perfect, this is done, done mock-ups. Yeah, yeah. We call it mock-up. Yeah. But they think this is the final, this, there's no... No imagination. No imagination. I don't, like, like, imagine the production world being like that, where you go into it the is, studio. It is, with uh with the bigger artists, like, a big artist, like, you start playing something and it's something half done, they're yeah, like, yeah. Oh, yeah. skip, it has to be... It's not okay, right. And what? usually the hook has to be written already, so they don't have to yeah. imagine what the song's gonna be about, they just totally. have to fill in their little Yeah, verses. you can't, you can't at all, <laughs> I mean, and that's something I tell a lot of people, where, the, like, someone will come in and they, they're like, Oh, the the movie said that they're just they're they're going to take care of of the sound. I mm-hmm. said, did they say the sound or did they say they're going to record the music? Right. <laughs> like, did they specifically so say yeah. that they were going to record it? Because if they say, oh, we're going to take care of all the sound, because I had a, a kid come in, he had a Sibelius file. I was like, oh, this is my score to this short film, and he's like, oh, I said, well, what are you doing for for like your mock up? Like, what's your? Oh, they're going to take care of it. I was like. Take care uh, what? Uh, <laughs> they're gonna take your Sibelius file and take the output of that 
and put that on the movie. Yeah, they're going to bounce like, that. He's like, no, they're not. No, they're not. I said, oh, yeah, they are. Yes, they are. <laughs> yes, you bet, you're, you bet your ass they are. And he was like, what? I was like, yeah. Like, whenever, don't ever expect anybody. It's even hard. Like, I'll even admit to myself, like, if I listen to a Sibelius file, I can't tell if it's going to be good or not. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> like, it's like, I don't listen to this Casio keyboard <laughs> level violin playing. Yeah. Like, I'm not, like, that's not expressive. It's not, yeah. there's no dynamics. There's no nothing. It's Is like, there it's even not key be... switching in Sibelius? Yeah, they'll do some key switching. Yeah, okay. They'll do like and they, and they've gotten better and like note note performer has gone come a long way. Right, like, right, right. Yeah. But but it's just like like the, whenever you're doing a demo, you cannot ask somebody who has no musical training just to imagine it. Yeah, yeah. Like they're not gonna know what's and I, I yeah. very rarely, I've only done this a handful of times where I've said, like, look, I, I did one time on a on a on a movie that I was gonna live record. It was a short film, I was gonna live record it. And there was like so, there was certain like ornamentation that I just could not get to work, mm-hmm. like these little fast like grace notes. And I told the director, I said, "Look, if you don't like it, we'll take it out, but you just have to trust me on this right now until we get into the studio. Right. And if you don't like it, we'll, mm-hmm. we'll 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 take it out. Like no no harm no foul. If you don't like it, we'll take it out. Mm-hmm. But like the samples cannot do this properly. Yeah, right. Um. So like." You, you're going through every single library yeah, and, and, looking for that, so that. Well, it was like some. I one of the agents had said. Uh, one agent had actually said, uh, like, if you're going through a demo and it's not interesting in the first ten seconds, they're going to turn it off. Right, right. You know, like oh, if yeah. if you're asking if if you're asking a producer to like, to, the most ideal situation. Like I did a spec demo for a Disney opening animated show, mm-hmm. and I really really liked it. I co-composed it with a fiddle player and friend of mine, and I thought it was like. It was a lot of fun and it was really cool. Mm-hmm. Um, but I screwed the mix up. I had like over compressed orchestra and stuff. But like, I would love nothing more to be like, oh, send it to Brad uh, Bradley and get it to to get him to mix it, get get Radium to mix it, and then it's gonna sound like a high level thing. Like they may even think we live tracked it, right? Mm-hmm. right. And then and then it's it's a finished product. Right. There, there's zero thought of well, maybe if we get it mixed, it'll be better. Right. Or maybe if yeah. we get it recorded, that's always it'll be the better. hard thing. The maybe if we well, and I would have. I actually I thought about sending it, but what ended up happening was um, they ended up coming back. They specifically in the first brief said no vocals, no nothing. Mm-hmm. We want like mostly acoustic instruments. We want this. And they came back. We want a song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Like, yeah. We need uh, a production. Song. And after I had done a marathon, I actually it was funny. I had done a marathon of of composing on it because. I thought I had another two days. Mm. And then my manager hit me up and he's like, hey, so do you have that thing today? You yeah, can send yeah, it to where's me that thing, man? And I was like, oh, no. So I called Steve <laughs> up. Steve lives in Nashville. And I'm like, hey, Steve, what are you doing today? Right. He's like, oh, I don't know. I'm, uh, fiddle I'm, recording? I was like, I said, hey, let's, uh, <laughs> we need to do this thing today. And he's like, oh. So like we actually, it was kind of cool. We were on FaceTime and like we would do, he would like, well, what about this idea? And I was like, oh, yeah, that's cool. So then we'd like mute each other on FaceTime. Mm-hmm. And then we'd like be playing along, and then he'd send me the file. We'd unmute. We'd listen to it. He'd send me the file. I'd put it in the the session, and we, okay, how about this? Okay, cool. So we'd mute each other and That's keep going. Awesome. So it was like yeah. almost like we were in the same room with two different setups. That's but, pretty fun. Were you using Dropbox or how? Yeah, we're yeah. using Dropbox on nice. it. Yeah. Um, but but it really is like the higher level version you give them the the closest the close as close as final you can bring in mm-hmm. to whatever you're bringing in, whether it's to mm-hmm. a producer, to an artist, to Whoever, I firmly believe you have a higher chance of, even if it's not as good. Even if like it's the not best like idea, as interesting even. Yeah, yeah, yeah the yeah. best idea poorly produced is going to lose to a mediocre to bad idea well produced every time. Yeah, 100%. You know what's funny on our side is that, you know, uh, I'll even say it for me especially. I, I don't have to speak for Brad, but um, <laughs> like, you know, having the technical know-how of mixing and, you know, having a background and degrees in audio like sometimes it's hard for me to like put the finished label on it because yeah. you know right. I know how deep I can take it you know what I mean yeah so. well it's that you have to be able to just at a certain point nothing's ever finished no exactly I mean and that's that's another thing whenever people are like oh man like I'm gonna I'm, I've been I'm like when how long have you been working on this track or whatever like <laughs> oh like like three months I'm like yeah. dude <laughs> you're not producing Bruno Mars yeah. like finish <laughs> the thing yeah. get you're out of budget yeah, like you gotta, you gotta, you gotta say, you gotta let go. Hundred percent. And also, I think bringing other people in helps you do that, right? Like bringing someone else in to to mix something, or to orchestrate or do whatever, also gives you some perspective. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, it's that's it's the whole 
time is money ad- adage, adage, you know, it's yeah. like, you know, you could, you could make time by paying for someone that specialized in it. Yeah. You could spend, you could spend forever trying to mix and master it and you're you never, just tweak every day. yeah, you're yeah. never going to get it to where we could get it in a few hours, you know, yeah. well, it's, it's not, the same thing with like composing and orchestrating. I'm not going to sit and orchestrate something for hours and then I send it to you and you're like, eh, that's all right. Did you find, <laughs> do you ever find though, like whenever I mixed, I remember mixing my first album, mm-hmm. I was in a funk band in college. Nice. And I remember I remember mixing our first album and like every day I woke up, got into the space we were mixing in. And it was like every day I was like, gosh, it's just not, you're just tweaking all the time. It's like yeah. yesterday I undo everything <laughs> I did today. Yesterday I know I do every undo everything I did yesterday today right. because I don't like the kick sound now. Or I yeah. don't like and it's like you have to eventually just go next time. Yeah, I think next time I I'm gonna think do something different. That's that's a really good point. And I, I think about this constantly. Yeah. Right? Because we're talking about art here. We're talking about how you feel. Yeah. And every single day you're going to feel different. Yeah. And what I always find is like, I'll do a mix master. I'll finish it. I finish it. And I'm like, it's done. I might go do the car test listen to it on all these things. And I go like, okay, I'm going to do this little tweak. I do that tweak and then I call it done. And that's the mood I'm in. And that's what I like. And yeah. that's what the, the song's been telling me. So yeah. I finish it. And then if I go back on it, Kevin's terrible at this, by the way. He'll okay. go. He'll go back on things. Throwing shade already. I see it. He'll, no, so, he'll go. He'll so go back on things every day, and he'll go. This could be better. This could be better. This could be better. Oh, on the uh, the title of the show. Media. He'll uh, just show always, me, He'll uh, always do it. I was like, hey, ask the director if uh, we could throw another mix on it. Right. Yeah. And he's like, no, they've already cut no. it to yeah, picture. It's already done. Yeah. So for me, I think the biggest thing is, and why it's so dangerous to think it can always be better is because you're going to wake up tomorrow a little sadder. Mm -hmm. Maybe just a little less slept or more slept or, you know, whatever. You're a little more angry. Your testosterone levels are a little higher. You're going to hear things different every single day. So you have to commit to to the song and the thing in your gut. Mm -hmm. And that is what art is. And I think that it's found in everything. It's in business. It's in composing. It's in sales. It's in making beats. It's in recording. You have to go with that gut instinct and you have to commit to it. I think it's also valuable because you're the more you the more you get out of the mindset of a making one thing and and, and right and like that, I, there's a <laughs> limit. Well, yeah, well there's this scarcity you start, thing. When you, know? you start, you think, oh, I need to make the best thing it's I can right now. Right? Like I have to make the best thing. Everyone's gonna judge right me now. on this. <laughs> well, no, I mean, and, and to some extent that's a fair thought, right? Like if you've only written ten things and sure. people are judging you on ten things. Yeah, hundred percent. Right? That's so, your whole body of yeah, work. Yeah, that's your whole body of work. So I get I get the the concern. But as you do more things and as you get further away from the things you've already done, uh-huh. like you realize like I can always do something else. Oh, I would love to do like for myself, like I love the super bad score. The Lyle <laughs> Workman super bad yeah, score. Yeah. I would love to do a funk. Yeah, like that's a, a fun funk one. film score. Like it's a that little would be, dated now, but you know you can freshen it up. Don't tell me how to live my life. Right? <laughs> don't I you will. Dare. I will do it don't exactly like you that. Dare you don't have um, the answers, Sway. Yeah, yeah no, I got but, the answers. <laughs> no, but my point. My point being is that's just like me. I know I would love to do that at some point. Right. But my my thing is, um, that's an idea that I file in the back of my head. Mm-hmm. That yeah, maybe I'll put my own spin on it. Maybe the right project comes up. Like. Maybe something cool comes up that I can do that on. Right. But, like, I don't need to do that right now. Right, right. And, like, oh, I would love to write a Star Wars score, but I don't need to make the movie I'm working on right now Star Wars. Right. <laughs> yeah, you know every, I mean? yeah. Or, or Star Trek or whatever. Yeah. Fill in the blank, right? Yeah. Like, uh, like, and directors will come to me and be like, oh, man, you know, like, I really love the score. I love how they used, like, I love how they used, uh, you know, right, right. R- name, r- name the yeah, biggest name. score right now. I love, I love how they use <laughs> Deduck in this one yeah. piece, and yeah. you're like, and they're like, can we use that in in this movie? And I'm like, your Cajun Christmas movie? Yeah. Like, <laughs> are you sure you want it? But and my response it is happened like, with Black Panther. Like, that's a great example. You know, let's do all these drum things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like, so in that scenario, why? you go like, well, that's cool, but like, when it's time to do that, we can do that. Like. Yeah especially with directors, it's like, you're going to make hopefully 10 movies and hopefully you hire me to do mm-hmm. all of them. And w- anytime you want to do something cool, anytime that they <laughs> call us for it, we can do it. Yeah, yeah. Right? Like, that's the thing. that and, and also, I've done enough work now that, like, I, it's almost like I blacked out mm. and a thing happened. And now, six months later, 
I can hear something played that I wrote, or mm-hmm. even a year later, especially we get past a year, it's like you're it's dicey. Yeah. Where I'm like, <laughs> I'll listen to it. I, my wife some, has like played something before that I wrote, and I'm like, who wrote that? Yeah. I was like, it sounds vaguely familiar. Yeah. What is this? That's kind of cute. That's like <laughs> that sounds interesting. Yeah. <laughs> and she's like, this is. She's like, looks at me like this is, this is you. Yeah. You wrote this, and I'm right. like, no. Oh. Like that, that, was, sounds, that, that was sounds, zombie, Andrew. Yeah, well, it, and it, it literally, like, even on <laughs> the middle the movie, of a deadline, the movie you mixed the album for, which is mm-hmm. like, you might be the killer. Like, I listened back to it, and it's like, man, how did I do that? Right. That's weird. Yeah. Like, because you get in the zone and you do it, and you, you don't. What I'm getting at is like, once you start doing it enough, I think it's also easier to let go because you're able to look back and realize, like, all the things that you were in your head about don't even matter. Like, oh, man, this is one little violin. I just really <laughs> wish I could get this one thing to sound yeah. right. It's the overall feel yeah, of everything. Yeah, well, and, and you're not listening it from an objective standpoint. You're you're thinking about that day when Pro Tools wouldn't export the right, click right, right. Right, right, And you're like, oh, gosh, I <laughs> can't get this thing to find that right articulation. Yeah, yeah exactly. I, I really wish I could have gotten this just slightly better. Yeah. But six months later, you're like, oh, I don't even think about how that kick yeah. is hitting. Yeah. I'm not even thinking about how. It doesn't even matter. Sh- like, it, yeah. that, it, it functions. Yeah, it functions, it functions exactly. and it works. And and you know what? If there truly is a problem, hopefully you learn from it and next time you do it. Right, right, right. Like, oh, damn, my workflow didn't work whenever this was happening. We had a huge meltdown. Let's fix it. So right. in the future, we've learned from it. Right. But it's not worth it's not worth you sitting there and toiling it yeah, over yeah. and over and over. I want to rewrite you, that whole thing. Well, like, I just don't understand. Like, I I wrote a concert piece that was that was like a memorial piece, and a publisher was like um, besides giving, besides just concert music publishing's horrible. Like yeah. it just pays <laughs> pennies, and uh, and and they were like, "Well, I want you to redo your entire piece," which I was kind of found iffy. It's like someone commissioned me to write this, so it's yeah. like I feel kind of weird doing that. And um, it was like, "We need you to redo it so it's been better keys for like young bands, and then also." Uh, like we want you to basically like retread all this ground, and I was like, "Why? Why not?" Mm-hmm. We take this, we put this in your library, and then I write a new piece that's in that matches the stuff you want. And now you have two instead of just one thing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and he was like, "No, I don't want to do that." <laughs> I was like, uh, "Like I." And then he also wanted me to do like a retread of some other piece. He wanted me to do a new arrangement of like Irish tune from County Dare. It's like that already has like really great arrangements. Why yeah, would yeah, I? Yeah. No one's buying that. Yeah, it's just go a waste rearrange that. But my point, my <laughs> I want to see you suffer. It was such a weird thing for someone to ask me to go back and because I just don't do that. Right. It's not I. Not that I refuse to do it. It's just like it's a mindset thing where it's like that's done. Right. I've learned right. what I'm going to learn from yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Moving on. Moving on. Let's do something Let's new. Do something different. Yeah. <laughs> something new. Or if I'm doing another Let's go action beat score, beat up that dead horse. <laughs> it's like well, if I'm doing another action score, I try to find something interesting and different about that score that I can do. Right. Mm-hmm. At that moment, it's like I don't have any particular want to go back and do that. I mean, if it's like a series or something, that's a different thing. Yeah. But like, I have, it's like, oh, cool. I, I mean, sometimes I have the thought of like, oh, I wish I could have gotten more out of that theme. Right. Because there's not a lot of screen time for whatever character. Right. But like, other than that, it's like just, it is what it is. Like, release what you got. Mm-hmm. The only way you're going to make make it, I think, in the music industry is if you're releasing and moving on, learning, do a new yeah, thing. moving. Yeah, I, I think I think the speed thing is is super underrated and undervalued in music. Like you got to understand, like how fast can you be? Oh, yeah. Like, can you make great stuff fast? Well, you're even, gonna win. You're mm-hmm. you're gonna win in every facet well, of music. And and also like to some extent that, and then also having at least in my world, having an understanding of how to execute fast right. at a high level, and then also knowing. Like constantly, constantly thinking about okay, if all the stuff that people are talking about comes in, mm-hmm. which never happens, right? right, right? Like yeah, I right. always am like at about fifteen 30, gigs in. The I'm air. always like thirty percent of what yeah, people yeah. talk to me about, maybe forty on a high end. But right. like of all the things that are coming in, what's gonna actually hit? Right, right. And I and then I also am thinking, okay, if let's say thirty percent of these things come in, mm-hmm. how do I handle that? Right. If three of these things happen at the same time, what's my what's my strategy? Right, right, right. And you have to have those systems in place. And people probably get annoyed who work for me because they're like, why is he even talking about this? It's not happening. Yeah, right. But at the same time, it's like if it does happen, which 
I mean, Can I'll be optimistic. It? Can you handle yeah. it? Because that's always when businesses fail is the scaling, yep. right? Yep. It's the, like, oh, I have an Etsy shop that makes that makes beanies. Right. <laughs> but whenever I get 100 orders, can I handle it? The right. answer is no. Right, right. Yeah, so. Uh, you spend a lot of time, though, like, and I think this is an important topic. <laughs> you you make a lot of beanies, yeah. Andrew. Beanies. And you can find them You know a lot about Andrew beanies. beanies. <laughs> yeah. Andrew's beanies. <laughs> Andrew's beanies, Etsy store slash bet. No. Yeah. Um, use my promo code. Yeah. Uh, no, you spend a lot of time as a composer or producer or studio owner, whatever, being a business owner. And what that means is you have to always be scouting for talent. Yeah. You have to constantly be going, hey, Andrew, hey, I know this guy that does, you know, mixes on the Dukes, you know, yeah. he's a great engineer for hand percussion or whatever. Yeah. And then, you know, this guy over there that plays amazing this, and then, you know, us that we can mix and master some stuff yeah. for you on the fly. Like you have all these arms out there and you're constantly like, you know, I find that that's something that most people forget about as producers or composers are sitting in a room, they're by themselves. They're with their guys, whatever, and that's all they do. And they don't know anybody else. Yeah. They don't spend time then going networking, network, finding people, scouting talent. Your network is effectively you. It is I mean, you, once you, 100%. Once you, get, once you get past the bedroom producer stage, <laughs> like I mean, like it, it really, or bedroom is. composer stage, it really is like, do you have the capability to create 60 minutes of music by yourself in three weeks? If the answer is yes, cool. Now time's up by three. Now times that by three. Now time. can you deal with two movies at once? Right. Now can you deal with three movies at once? Now can you deal with a movie and a TV show at once? Right. And that's really like the low, I say low to middle end composer mm -hmm. is where you're at, right? Like it's going to yeah. be like your buddy's making a feature film. Okay, cool. You, now you have a short film from a film student and you don't want to say mm -hmm. no. And it's always hard to say no, but especially when you're starting out, you want to say yes to as much as possible. Right. Mm -hmm. So what do you do? What are your strategies to deal with that? And, and that's how, do you and that's how you have to be thinking. Yeah, and if I need a mix, if I have a TV show, I mean, we had a conversation yesterday because someone called and asked if I could write 765 minutes of music right. in how long would that take, which right. is an insane number. Don't ever do that. <laughs> Don't ever say yes to that. But, but and what are the strategies to deal with that? And, my, and I had a call with Bradley saying, okay, if I make a 70-minute library... What like are we talking about? How how would you set up that workflow for it to best work? How would we set that up? Right. What's the way to do it? So that way, I have an answer when I go to the to the pitch meeting. Yeah. You know, like I have an answer to bring to the CEO and say, look. Well, you have a pitch. I have a pitch. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, I this is how I'm going to handle it. You know, exactly because you do not know everything. No. You know, I yeah, know I don't know everything. Yeah, that's what people will be more scared of. You'll lose more projects by going into a fucking room and going like this. Yeah, we could do that. How are you going to do it? Uh, we're just going to, I would just take it on. I would just do everything. Yeah. They, they'll be like, instantly, you're not hired. Yeah. You have to be like, well, I have a team over here that would do the mixing and mastering. Yeah. I have my orchestrators. I have these players from the Philhar LA Philharmonic. I'm going to reach out to this, uh, you know, yeah. orchestrator, this guy over here, and this is how I'm going to work. We've always worked Especially like if that. you've never, if, if, if you've done it before, like mm -hmm. if... If you walk into a room and you've scored, you know, a major feature film, they're not going to have to ask. They're not going to ask because they know you got the system. Right. But if you've never proven yourself at that level, or Amen. if let's say that say that they walk into a room and you've only done five thousand dollar feature indie features, right. and they go, <laughs> "Hey, we have sixty grand right. for you to go live record and produce everything," and you go, "I got it. It's all me, bro. I got a computer. It's sick. I got a computer. I got <laughs> Sibelius. I. I'm just going to do it. You know exactly. I mean, it's like it just really. It's unrealistic to think you'll ever do that. Right. And I mean, also, it's so easy to think that, like, that, like, these major composers are doing all the stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, like, they're not. Huh? I mean, like, I, and, and, and it's, I don't mean that as a ding to them. I mean, that's just, like, not how the industry functions. It's Same just, with uh, music different. producers. Yeah, too. yeah it's just uh, not. Keep it's, it real. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's not, it's not how the music, how the industry functions. It's, yeah. it's, it is you do a job. And you're a cog in the wheel to create a product. Right. And that is what it is. You're not, to some extent, composers aren't artists. Right. We, we are, to some level, a craftsman. Yeah, and we're like, we're you, like this producers. Is your shop. This is we're, your shop. We're of helping people. produce something, you know. Well, I mean, if you think of a, I mean, I. Coordinators. <laughs> anyone who produces any product, right? If you build a car, 
The CEO doesn't build the car. No. Even the designer doesn't build the car. Right. Right? The, the designer will build the design Robots for the car. Robots build the car. Robots build the car. <laughs> Robots have been a repetitive theme in but, this show. But you know what I'm saying? Like, like one person doesn't build everything in some right. really expensive situation, right? It is a team of people that goes down the list. You have your welders. You have your guys who are going to do the upholstery in the car. Right. You have the guys who are going to do each part. And those are super important. Yeah, 100%. You know? And I, I think that that's, that's important to understand that that's not a bad thing. No. Like, you know, the more people on deck and the more, like, you need leadership. You mm-hmm. know, you need someone. And that's what, I mean, a composer could, you could just call it like the CEO, you know, or yeah. the producer on the album, executive producer. You know, if Dr. Dre executive produces an album, it's he's not sitting there like, I made every beat. Yeah. <laughs> I'm coming in, I'm recording everything. I'm going to mix it. I'm going to get the sound. Like, yeah. You know, he's just like, yo, I know exactly who I want on the team. Exactly. It's he's like, I want this guy doing this, this guy doing that, and then I'm going to... executive produced by Steven Spielberg. Steven yeah. Spielberg didn't sit down. I mean, he could have, but he didn't sit down and write it. No. He may have... He probably approved the pitch. He Maybe probably... Maybe just approved the writers. He approved <laughs> yeah. the writers. He probably approved the pitch, and then he trusts who he puts in charge of it. 100%. And that's a huge deal. I mean, and, and um, I get, like, there are a lot of people out there. I mean, I... There are a lot of people out there, and I've even heard musical artists say, this, "Like, if you don't write and, pr- and write your own music, yeah, yeah. you're not a real artist." Yeah. And it's like, so, so you're telling me that, Drake has ghost writers? Did you know that? So it's like you telling me you telling me that the that the violin virtuoso who's playing Paganini isn't a true artist? Yeah, right. Yeah, that's full of crap. Yeah. Like, it's like all bullshit. Yeah. Like, like the, that person has just as much artistry as the composer did to exactly. write it. Like, it's, exactly. It's silly because also that I would fall in that category. Yeah, this yeah. is like. I don't perform my own music. Right. Like, I mean, I technically do. I like play it in the keyboard. But like, if an orchestra plays my music, they're interpreting my music. Totally. I, I, like, so I'm not an artist now. I guess. Right. Right. You're not <laughs> an artist. It's just such a silly. You it's didn't just such play a silly, it. And also, also the person <laughs> who said that, like, her band is sick. Yeah. Like, I Super love sick. her band. I do not like her very much. And it's just like I'm just sitting there and be like. Your band is ridiculous. The right. reason why you're good is be <laughs> no one's coming here for you. Right, right. You know what I mean? Like right. if you just had a bunch of high schoolers with a bass guitar and a saxophone, yeah. you'd suck. Right. <laughs> this would be <laughs> terrible. Know? So like that that kind of silliness is just like you are your team. Yeah. 100%. You know, like and like a lot of these big composers are brands. Yeah. Yeah. You know, like like remote control is a brand. Yeah. Totally. Uh, you know, any fill in the blank. Yeah. They're a brand, which and that's what a big corporation wants. Like if Disney comes to you to score, mm-hmm. you know, Star Wars, right. they're not coming to you to be, you know, this niche artist. They're looking right. t- at you to become part of their brand and you're a reliable brand and you have name recognition right. and they know you're going to give it to you. Like right. they know that you're going to give them what they ask for. You're going to deliver it. Mm-hmm. And it's going to be fine. Yeah. And that's what they care about. And the movie's yeah. not going to bomb because the score sucks or yeah, yeah, is yeah. late. Yeah, yeah. But we'll be the first to be blamed for it. <laughs> I have a, uh, I have a funny, funny topic. I think uh, losing jobs in the film, TV, commercial industry. Segway. Segway. There we go. Segway. Right. Didn't announce it. <laughs> no, um, I, I just, I, I hear a lot of stories from people. And, you know, obviously I'm not going to name names. But I hear when such and such musical artist you know what I mean, wants to score and gets a show off of, you know, name brand recognition but can't deliver it. You know, oh, yeah. it delivers a bunch of demos, yeah. for example. Yeah. And I've I've worked with those people. Mm-hmm. Um I've done ghostwriting for I specifically did ghostwriting for a rapper who somehow found a way to get to demo for a very large movie. Wow. And somehow <laughs> somehow I was and I thought it was a joke. Uh he came at me, he called me and he's like Hey man, I hear you do orchestra or whatever, and I was like, "Yeah." <laughs> like, are you signed with anybody? I was like, uh, "I don't have representation." Is mm-hmm. that what you're talking about? Because <laughs> I think he thought that it was like a label mm, situation, yeah, yeah. and I was like, "And I, I mean, the guy was more than nice to me. It was just, a, it was a really weird situation. And usually, when people come at you hard, they either really know what they're doing or they don't know." Any, right, right, right. <laughs> like they're, they're in, they're, and so he was throwing all these artist names that he had worked with and it became this like weird moment of like this is one of those moments where he actually wasn't full of crap mm-hmm. like he actually had worked with these people yeah. where those are there are those like there are those movies that are like 
we this script was once touched by Steven Spielberg. Right. Go watch our movie, you know? <laughs> like, we have Kevin Costner in this movie. And it's like Kevin Costner, like, looking at the camera for two seconds and walks away. It's actually, like, they, or, or my favorite is, like, we shot this on Red Epic. Yeah. And I'm like, <laughs> shot on Red Epic. Do you happen to know how to light a shot? Yeah. yeah. No? Okay, then it doesn't matter. Um, so Great like, camera, though. So, like, I, I got this this movie, and it was just like, are you, I, I didn't, I didn't, I all of a sudden saw these like really big name actors on my screen and I'm, mm-hmm. I'm just like, who, what? Like you <laughs> pulled this off? Like, that's funny. Are you crazy? Like, okay. So I did the demo. Uh, he didn't get the job. Um, but according to him, the director loved what he did. It's just, he went with a named composer. Go figure. Mm-hmm. But I mean, it, it is one of those things where like, there are so many people who are like, I mean, I get I get reference for uh, for the movie Her all the time, mm. you know. Right. And it's not that, and and obviously like Trent Reznor is, and a lot of guys, a lot of guys have made the crossover mm-hmm. from from like Junkie rock XL. and yeah, Junkie XL right. traditional stuff to more to to like rock stuff to more traditional scoring stuff. Um, I mean, I don't, dude. It happens. A lot. I mean, I think it's just a branding thing, right? Like, mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, yeah. How many there, people know you? What's your name? Who do you? Well, know? I had a conversation with a friend of mine who's who's looking to make some movies, and he's like, "I'm not going to lie to you. Like, I, if I were to hire you, I'd look at your Instagram following and your Facebook following mm-hmm. and your in your YouTube views, right. and like, are you bringing at least some brand recognition to this to the table? Right. Like, mm-hmm. which like I find you're following just watch a movie just because you were which on. I find gross but at right. the same time I get it I mean mm-hmm. at the end of the day it's it's becoming more and more and more about image and about branding yep. but even then it's like how many I guess like at the end of the day how many composers sell soundtracks with solely their name right 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 yeah, like not many. what three yeah. yeah very few right like three and yeah. then even then you know so maybe the thought is oh well if we get Arcade Fire to do the score for this then <laughs> then like they'll sell albums because they have millions of of fans, fans yeah. right? right? So like I get the money talk behind it, but there's always a thought of like okay, logistically, how do we score a movie with a band that's never done this? Yeah. Yeah. So you get a situation like uh Joe Trapanese or Joe Trapanese right, doing right. doing like working with Daft Punk to Yeah, you always have like score. a yeah, a combo. You have to have you Which have is have actually a- really hard for composers. Oh, yeah. I wouldn't even I would that yeah. would be just because, you know, it's a different world. It's like they come in and they're like, yeah, man, I'm an artist. I want to, like, do this crazy thing. And you're like, cool, we got 45 minutes. Yeah. You know, and they're like, like you gotta what do you mean? In. We're going to get some guitar tones for 45 minutes. You got to rein in. <laughs> the, <laughs> you know, and, and I, yeah, We exactly. want to mess with these synths for an hour and a half. Yeah, exactly. And I'll get, you exactly. that, I'll get you that thing in, like, three weeks or something, right? Yeah. Because we're going to no. tweak it at the studio. Well, and I think like, at that no. level, too, at that level, like, so much money is being thrown around that doesn't matter. Yeah, right. Right? Mm-hmm. Like, if... if, if and then it's just the engineer, like, of that big producer that's working on everything. <laughs> yeah, no, it really it really does become... I mean, like, Trent Reznor writes an album, and then they edit to the album. Right. Like, it's mm-hmm. film scoring the most loose sense. And yeah. I don't mean that in an insulting way. If that, if no, that's it's how actually... It it's a cool way of doing it. If that's how it functions, yeah. then mm-hmm. sure. And I... I, I I would be interested. I haven't seen anything on the creation of the Her score, but I'd be interested to know how much was that, how much is, right, and even right. like big movies like uh, Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah, right. that's how um, James Gunn liked to work, yeah. which is just, I mean, it kind of screws the composer, right? Because like you go out, <laughs> like especially with Marvel movies, it's a package deal. Yeah. yeah. So I know that on the first Guardians movie, Tyler Bates had four hundred thousand dollars or something, and he had well, to go he, out of pocket. He, yeah, he did to, to re-record to, yeah. to re-record cues that didn't fit. Yeah, I mean, he made it back. It was a big. I mean, and, and obviously in that still movie, a gamble though. It's a gamble, but on right. that movie, I think you could see the potential. But even good right. movies will flop. Yeah, hundred percent. You know, so like, it's very. It can be. It's. I don't. I'm not against doing that kind of stuff. It's just one of those things where it just becomes kind of the most basic form of it. Right. You know, it's like that. It's that. I. I don't. There's a, there's a big difference, and also it also comes out in the movie. Like if we're just talking about the art of film scoring, right, right, right. Um, like there is a lot of stuff that I would do that editors won't do. Right. Um, 
I find a lot of movies, you can tell a movie that's been edited to score because it feels like a music video. Right, right. <laughs> right? So 100%. like so many times, and not, not all of them, I don't feel like Guardians feels like a music video aside from the obvious like music placements. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of supervision in that movie. Yeah, so but right. but I'm talking about the actual score, right? right, right so right. like, no, like the score's the score is great. Well, but what I'm but like as an example, like on a, on a movie that's let's talk about like The Dark Knight, right? right, or, right. Where like you have these like very very on like four on the floor almost. Yeah, right. Drum like mm-hmm. and and every cut is on a beat. Yeah, Every not every single cut, but it becomes a music video. Yeah, and actually or a montage. I watched. I I was. Everyone loved Wonder Woman. I didn't see Wonder Woman in the theater, which is probably a mistake. Um, mm. And I, I saw, I was, I wa- everyone was like, oh, it's great, it's great, it's great, it's great. I was like, okay, cool. Mm-hmm. Let me watch it. I watch it. 30 minutes in, I turn it off because I was bored out of my mind. Right, right. <laughs> and the reason why so many times I was bored is because the music didn't allow me to feel any anxiety. Right. It's like, yeah, the, good point. We got through the, the, I got to the first battle montage in World War One. So everything's all, it's all, it's all on a rail. Yeah. And there's, right. whenever a, a character is in danger, the music doesn't acknowledge it. Right, right. And, and I'm not, I'm not concerned about it. Right. Like, it's just, oh, I know this is going to, it's, it's going to work, work out. out fine. Yeah. It's going to work out. <laughs> yeah. I mean, on top of it being Kick a superhero. Kick some ass, guys. <laughs> yeah, it's already a superhero movie. <laughs> yeah. So I already know the, that, it's all the, gonna work that out. she's going to be okay. Right. So like, it doesn't allow, and I've actually, I've had conversations with directors. I scored a really cool Green Lantern short film that had mm-hmm. the same problem. Right. There was a huge, he'd choreographed this amazing fight scene, like mm-hmm. through this whole warehouse and there mm-hmm. were all these like flipping and things. But the four on the floor music had basically made me lose track that there was like three sequences that like his partners almost killed. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And and whenever I sent him my score, which didn't do that, he was like, well, but I really liked how this one kind of always hit, 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 hit. Yeah, yeah. And I was yeah. like, but but I said, dude, I watched it the first time and I completely missed right. like these three moments. Yeah, you get kind of just zoned out on it. Yeah, it's a montage. I yeah, think yeah, the montage yeah. vibe is a really good way to put it. It's yeah. like there are certain things that I do when I custom score to a sequence Right. That an editor is going to naturally want to cut on the beat, whereas I'm going to cut to the to the emotional beats of the sequence. Right, right. Yeah. Um, and like, it's fine to go in and out of like hits and to do all these mm-hmm. different things, but like to be completely on a rail knocks you out of it. Yeah, totally. Um, you just kind of zone out. Yeah. Yeah. Everything becomes kind of like, okay. You're just being bombarded with information. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. And, totally. you, and I think, I mean, you, your brain kind of shuts off. Yeah. Like I'm just now a zombie watching people getting their ass kicked. Right. It's almost like it's almost like watching like a fail compilation. It's like I know the person's gonna fall over. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, here it comes. Here it comes, it baby. Fell face. Oh, it <laughs> fell fell in the pool. Cool. Yeah. You know, it's like you know it's gonna happen. It just it just emotionally takes you out of it. I think. Um, and I I I think I would have probably been fine with Wonder Woman in the theater. It was just yeah. over. No, it makes and, sense. And, oh, it was oversold to me. Right. Right. Mm. I think yeah. that's that's kind of the the problem we have when we work on films and TV and and albums is that yeah. we have just a totally different perspective on it. Yeah, you're like, you oh, know? that's Omnisphere. Oh yeah, no, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's Omnisphere. Or you're like, oh yeah, I remember. Oh, that's Symphobia Patch. I remember mm. tuning those vocals for four hours. Oh, yeah, wow. <laughs> like sure heard them before. Uh, yeah, before Will uh, got the Melodyne on him, you know, mm, like. Yeah. Ugh. Hey guys, is anyone? Do you know if rough. that act, do you know if that actress can sing? Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, she says she can sing. Yeah, she's great. Uh, have you listened to her sing? Yeah. <laughs> oh no, she says she could do it all. She did it all the time. She says uh, she sings all the time. Man. Uh, she sings at church. It's fine. Uh, let me tell you this. I looked her up, and <laughs> these vocals will be tuned. These are very tuned. <laughs> um. So yeah, man. So uh, what's what's next for you, and uh, wh- where are you headed with all this, and where can people find you online? Because that's going to be a, a big, you know. We want to find you. We want to know what's going me. on. Yeah. I'm right here. How do I find you? I'm right here. I'm He's trying to get you. you to drop all the secrets, all the secret drop projects the- you're working uh, on. So, <laughs> secret projects. Uh, I hopefully have a full slate of stuff this year. Uh, people seem to be bringing stuff to me, which is always great. Always good. Um, but I'm tr- I'm working on some uh, video content for just over the, over the years. I've found that. I hit get hit with a lot of the same questions, <laughs> right, right, <laughs> like right. and not questions, not like necessarily tech questions, like very, uh, like basic, like how like, do what's I it like sort of thing. Well, like how do I deal practical, like how do I deal with notes and how do I, um, you know, like yeah, like some practical stuff. So, but like how do we do mockups? How do we do these things? And right. so, 
I've started a YouTube channel to do just some general nice general idea stuff or things that come up like when directors give me horrible notes yeah, and yeah. I'm like mm, this is driving me insane. Yeah, yeah. So I got to get it off my chest, right? So <laughs> I've done some of that stuff and I'm hopefully going to be producing a, mo- a video or two every every month. Nice. On general topics and that's on I think it's Andrew Morgan Smith Music on YouTube and then um uh I'm on Instagram, I'm on SoundCloud. Uh, Andrew Morgan Smith on SoundCloud, and then I think A Music S on Twitter and Instagram. Nice. Um, so go follow him. Yeah. So that's keep up with Andrew Morgan Smith. That's it. I know we'll be uh, keeping up with you. You'll probably be uh, keeping up with us as well. Yeah. And um, this is true. You know, giving us orders, giving us phone calls at random Look, hours. Man, I will. I will be happy to give you orders as long as I have the money to give you. The that's orders. right. That's right. We don't mind orders when as there's long a paycheck. As there's a paycheck the on the back end. Yeah. That's yeah. It. Oh, Andrew's calling shit. I you better know. answer it. Yeah. I'm on the toilet. Okay. Yeah. What's up, man? Sorry, babe. I know that our anniversary is important, yeah. but <laughs> <laughs> but Andrew's calling. He's got notes, man. Yeah. That's, uh, that's it. That's it. Yeah. And then uh, go follow Kevin at KDE Beats on IG at Bradley HD. On IG and uh, and on Tinder and on, on Tinder, Tinder. <laughs> swipe, grinder swipe right, ladies. Yeah, swipe right. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and at Radium underscore Media, that's where you're gonna find all this content. And we also got a YouTube, obviously. So thanks for coming through, man. Yeah, man. Always a course. always a pleasure. Yeah, man, for sure. Yeah, we'll do it again sometime. Yes, please.